One big thing I got to say about South Africa, must get this in before we close. The African Revolution is the titular head of the world revolution, and the Africans in America are the only ones that can light the fuse. The African Revolution is the titular head to the world African Revolution, but only the Africans in America can light the fuse. Understand that. The South African anti-apartheid movement has failed. I, you can get the list of anybody who runs it in New York, I'll stand them on the wall, take me five minutes and undressing them about why didn't you go here, why didn't you go there, who did you really put the pressure on, let me see the flyers, what did you really say, and why were you walking around a fucking embassy and don't even know who the people are that work there or where they live? And why did you ever not put pressure on Solomon Brothers and Lazard Ferrez? Uh, Felix Rohatton sits on the board of Minoco that owns Solomon and is a director up in the Anglo-American thing. But why was it that the Anglo-American Corporation in 1986 decided that the ANC would be the organization that would lead the white people to peaceful negotiations in Africa? Why did the ANC sell out to Anglo-American? Why did the ANC sell out to Anglo-American? Get the book Black and Gold by Anthony Sampson. Get the chapter called Revolutionaries and Tycoons about Galvin Riley, Rhodes Scholar, Chairman of Anglo-American, who went to Oliver Tambo and had the meeting in London, and Tambo's first words were, we are all South Africans. That gives the white man entitlement to the land. No land for the white man in Africa. No land for the white man in so-called America. No land, no deals, right? So now the ANC is now in the focal point of the movement, but remember it was an integrated organization like the NAACP and Urban League. It had white people in it when white people couldn't get in every organization in Azania. And remember this and don't you ever forget it, that now that the Anglo-American Corporation has safely put the ANC and Mandela at the front of the negotiations, the ANC has changed their position that was unchangeable. They have agreed they will never nationalize the gold and diamond mines. Now, you can't have no peaceful settlement and the white man keeps the gold and the diamonds. I'm sorry, ANC. We will kick your ass before we let you sell out. Yeah. Now, everybody, everybody ain't gonna like that because everybody don't understand it. They have never fought the Anglo-American Corporation for any of this, though they are the ones that run it because like Rockefeller, they got a liberal front imagery. And they played, paid plenty of Negroes. Here, I told you before about Randall Robertson fronting as a spy for the Rockefeller Foundation by going out and doing the Greater Voice for Rockefeller, Greater Voice for Africa Project. The Greater Voice for Africa Project, where Randall Robertson went around to the major cities and asked all the African organizations what was their activity on Africa. And then the Ford Foundation just come out and agreed to build constituencies for Africa in all of the cities that Randall Robinson spied on. And if any of them, Randall Robinson, Vivian Lowry at the African American Institute or any of us challenge what I say, they can accuse me of blasphemy, take me to court, hit me or whatever else they think they need to do, but only five minutes with them in front of you will show you they are the spies that have been holding you back. You might not want to accept it, you might not understand it, it will go into the tape, it will go into the record, it is registered before the law of the people, and the people will take their time and figure it out. Mandela is now out of jail and 30 million people went in. He is not worth it. He can take his ass back to jail. Because Mandela is the freest man in all of Africa, but the people ain't free. So now one of the conditions to lift the sanctions was that they could have political parties. So now they got political parties, but the shit cake can't even vote. Now what you need with a political party, you can't vote. The two reporters are on Jeffries. The two reporters on Jeffries, okay. As you can see, okay. Right? Now y'all know I don't leave. Y'all know I ain't going nowhere. Also want to say, hold it before you go, let me say this here. See like, you got Brother Professor Griff. Brother Professor, you still here? You got Brother Professor Griff here, right? who was a part of Public Enemy. Let me get a brother, get a brother a hand, it's my brother. Yeah. This brother used to call and ask for the tapes and the information. And the brothers would sit up and listen and learn about the information going on in a worldwide situation. 
And when the brother started going out and going out, he was the minister of information. It was his role to articulate the impressions that the group was making on the youth. And when brother went out and started talking very clearly about the diamond people and Switzerland, brother, me tell me about being banned in Switzerland. And then the group member saying, brother, you got to tone down. And brother, you got to tone down. And brother, you got to tone down. It really meant, brother, you got to shut the fuck up so we can get paid. Public enemy became public friend, and you need to know it. I don't ever want you to forget it. And what I want you to know about it is everybody don't stand straight when the Jewish people come, knees do buckle. And when they put the pressure on Professor Griff, right in that article by Donald Mills, who brother put his name back in the street on that lasted long enough to put his name back on the street, hit a brother down there, broke down and cried when you challenged him there at Howard University for the pain of having done what he did to you and me Brother says, where'd you get this information from? He says, from Henry Ford and Steve Copley. Now, one of us are dead. But then Chuck D go right in the Billboard magazine and say, them, them sources Griff gave have long since be, been discredited. I don't know if he's talking about me. But the other side of it was that what it really came down to is that you can't make no money in white world unless you learn how to fight the system. See, the system, you can fight the white man, the Jew man, the system, but you can't fight nobody in specific. That's why we ain't putting the pressure on the right people because we have been misled by the people who fight in general. You will know who gets paid by how deep they go with the analysis of the enemy because the left alone and identified, the people will take care of them. The people will take care of the ones who've been fingered, who are killing the Africans in America. The people will take care of that. But don't nobody want to put that out there. And this brother went through pure hell for standing up and saying that and the brothers had to ostracize him, hoping that the Jewish people would come in and fuck him up. They would hope that they would put the pressure on him. Then the brother go down there and get with brother Luke and then they go jump brother Luke. All out of the sky, they just gonna jump this brother. And the real reason they was jumping him because he defended and promoted this brother. You all gotta learn that when a man, like when they said Steve Coakley was out, not one black person stepped up to him, they stepped away from me. Because when they say put him on ice, even the big ones run, yes they do. And they always say you'll never make it in this world unless you learn how to fight in general, my friend, because that's always what you got to do, especially when you're fighting the Jewish people. And many people are afraid of the Jewish people, but you got to remember this if you don't never remember them. They are some of the weakest people on the planet. There's a book, there's a book that you should get. There's a book that you should get called Fate of the Jews. I reviewed the book in a tape back there on black and Jewish relations at the University of Maryland. This book here, The Fate of the Jews, the, this book, The Fate of the Jews, A People Torn Between Israeli Power and Jewish Essex, Ethics by Roberta Strauss Fraudalite. You should get this book. They say that the white people that own more maids and servants than any white people in America are the Jewish people. How the Jewish people took advantage of you when they came here. How a Jewish person sold you, but no Jewish person has ever been sold ever by a black person. And ain't no Jewish person cleaning up no black person's house. Get the book and read in here, pardon me? The author, Roberta, F-E-U-E-R-L-I-G-H-T, and they beat the shit out of the woman, because if you get the book by Lenny Brenner, Jews in America Today, you will hear Lenny Brenner say how this woman got beat up for writing this book, and Lenny Brenner also says in that book that Edwin Black, who wrote the transfer agreement, got his ass kicked too when he showed that the Zionists had helped Hitler, even though they clown call me Hitler, call his brother Hitler, a brother minister Hitler, that the ADL and the American Jewish Congress and the American Jewish Committee did more for Hitler than we ever could have done. And then they beat the shit out of Edwin Black, and then Lenny Brenner said he only told half of the truth. He could have told more. And Lenny Brenner did this book, did this book, Zionism in the Age of Dictators by Lenny Brenner, and Jews in America Today by Lenny Brenner. Get this book here, The Diamond World by David Kosky. Get that information on that diamond connection. You gotta have that information on the diamond. There's also a book by Edward J. Epstein. There's also a book here, The Rise and Fall of Diamonds by Edward J. Epstein. About Jews by a Jewish person. You should get this book. Uh, on the diamond connection. Yes, on the book list because, and get the tape back there, the most copies I have left are diamonds, Jewish people in South Africa. You here in New York can do more for that than anyone ever. One last story before you walk out. One last story. It's the last story, listen up. How many of y'all seen the movie The Wiz? 
Yeah, the wizard or the wizard of Oz. Y'all remember that it was three people going in pursuit of four people? It's always four people and a dog. You got, the, one was looking for a heart, one was looking for courage, one was looking for, what was that? Something, brains. Now them are things everybody need. But to get them, they had to go to the wizard because they felt it had been unfair, so they had to go to the wizard to get them. But to get to the wizard, you had to go through the FBI, the CIA, the Pentagon, the National Security Council. You seen them little guys going, oh, e -o, e -o. and they was kicking Dorothy and all them in the ass to keep them from getting to the wizard. But they kept pushing. They kept going down the yellow brick road. They kept pushing. And if you remember in the Wiz, it got to that moment when they had flushed old Eveline down the toilet and the people had them little funny suits on. They unzipped their suits and they did that dance about, can you see it? Brand new day. And then those same people who had fought and stopped them from getting to the Wizard of Oz then assisted them on their way because once they had been forced to acknowledge the truth, they then assisted the ones they were holding back because all people who do it to you do not always want to do it. But when they get free, they will come and get free with you. And then when they finally got up on the Wizard, what did they find? He wasn't shit. He was a prop. The ones that we're after, the richest, biggest, most powerful ones we're after, need the police, Brown, Dinkins, the Boulay, the Skull and Bones, the Masons, the FBI, the CIA, the Defense Department. They need the New York Times, the Post, the Daily News, the Tribune, Newsweek Times. They need the Harvards, the Yales. They need the uh, think tanks, the Aspens, the Brookings. They need them to keep you from saying that if you ever got up on their ass one-on-one, -on -one, you will beat them because they are just a prop. Thank you. Thank you all very much. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Oh, okay. Thank you, buddy. Okay, great. I need to sign this? Yeah, yeah, you know, just sign it. I'm going to be out front.